Hello, this is Wildtronics in the field with some more tips on how to use parabolic microphones to your advantage. This time we're going to discuss how do you record frogs using a Pro Mini parabolic microphone. Frogs can be very difficult to get a video of a single frog calling within a chorus of frogs. Normally uh, the choruses are so loud that with most microphones you cannot isolate that single frog that you're actually filming. The parabolic microphone you can isolate a particular frog that you are filming. Here's my setup here. We are using a Pro Mini parabolic microphone mounted to a camera. Um, basically all it is is it's hooked onto the hot shoe with a hot shoe adapter on it. Uh, has a microphone in it and it directly, I, for this purpose, uh, I tend to just directly connect the microphone to the body of the camera. If you have a body, a camera body that is good, low noise uh, mic input, uh, it's plenty good for m many louder things, especially frogs that are very loud. Um, of course, frogs usually come out at night and they're most active at night and calling. So what I have here, I have a little adapter here on the back of the accessory bar mount on the parabolic, mini parabolic, a uh, little adapter here to connect one of these little uh, cube lights, as you can see here. And I usually set the cube light for the lowest setting and set my ISO to about 4,000 on the camera. Um, I'm using like a one to 400 millimeter lens. It's like an F5, four and a half, five area. Um, it's good enough. Once you have a little bit of light, you don't want to have too much light because then the, uh, the frogs may be irritated, may not call as much. So if you get a little bit of light, you bump up the ISO uh, and you can get pretty good recordings. Now, on some things like um, spring peepers, you may, Normally, I would normally just run it like this. If I was recording birds, I would connect it to there. Birds are normally far enough away where you don't get the angle. The angle of the lens to the angle of the parabolic is nearly identical. With close proximity, that changes because the angle difference between something just in front of the lens, three feet in front of the lens, is obviously going to be a different angle than the parabolic microphone. So. If that happens and I'm recording like a very small little spring peeper and I need to get within three feet of it, um, you could take the parabolic microphone off and, and directly hold it on top or point it directly at the spring peeper or subject that you are trying to film. And it works amazing. I can ice, I mean, you walk into a marsh many times, spring peepers are almost ear piercing. With a parabolic mic within close proximity of that spring peeper, you can isolate that single spring peeper out of a ear piercing course of other peepers in the whole area. So that's a, a good tip on how to use a parabolic microphone, a pro mini it anyway. Now, the microphone selection can vary. Um, if you're recording birds or something that's further away, not as loud, you could probably get away with the, our Wildtronics MicroMic PIP or uh, maybe preferably our Wildtronics uh, Mini Stereo PIP microphone directly connected into a good quality camera. Uh, for this uh, spring peepers in particular, they're so loud that I need to really turn the gain down a lot to actually get an input into the camera that it won't clip. So right now I am using a Wildtronics Amplified Omni microphone connected into the Pro Mini Parabolic. And that's because I have gain controls here where I can turn the gain down and I can turn it down enough where I could go right on top of a, uh, a lot, very loud subject like a spring peeper um, or of any other like, you know, green frogs. Sometimes uh, they get pretty loud too. Um, but you could get a lot closer to the spring peeper if you can turn the gain down enough. If you're using an external recorder you, or in a different mic, that's just fine too. Um, it's just a little more bulky and it's, it's harder to use. Now, 
how do I, how do I get around in the marsh getting close to things that are in the water? First of all, make sure your camera or whatever doesn't go in the water. That's the most important thing. Basically, I have this uh, uh, strap over my neck at all times and uh, it's making sure that it doesn't fall. Uh, make sure that you don't fall in the water and then dump everything in the water. I have it mounted to a small tripod and I have, a, have the legs out like this so it supports in, in the marshy areas without not getting completely dunked and turning over and stuff. Um, and then I just, I find, I find the subject and I can just rotate on, this happens to be a ball mount um, works okay for this particular application for getting uh, little frogs. And then I just go there and I find the frog. I, um, I zoom on, on it. Uh, <laughs> spring peepers are so small that I'm usually running at 400 millimeters plus um, and using a little light. And, and just like I said, you can use these little cube lights and, or you could just get a little handheld light and hold it and that works good too, but just don't use a lot of light because then it, you know, your subject is in the dark and you want it to look like it's in the dark. And that's, those are some tips on how to record uh, wildlife and in particular uh, frogs at night in a marsh. And you'll need probably some boots too. You can have waders or something that goes up, rubber boots that you can walk around in the marsh and not have to worry about getting wet feet.